Hey, hey, what's up, good people? This is my 1969 Camaro we call the Rat Marrow. And this is a used engine I bought off a of marketplace. We're going to see if we can get this to run in this. Good times. Well, you know the drill. Bought this sight unseen off marketplace, 450 bucks. Uh, fella said uh, that it ran good, came out of an 86 Silverado, and then it, uh, you know, turned over and everything. Uh, looks like we're missing a water pump. We got tissue and all the exhaust parts. No spark plugs. I see all the spark plug holes are open. Don't have a flex plate or a flywheel. We have part, I guess, of a distributor. Old style intake with the EGR. Uh -huh. This is the style that doesn't take the mechanical fuel pump anymore. I guess we just dig in, see what we can figure out here. I guess we'll start by verifying that it does in fact turn. <clears throat> Hmm. You know, with no spark plugs in the holes, this really should turn over pretty easy. And it is not. Oh, all I'm doing is tightening that bolt. You don't want to break that crank bolt. Let's put a bore scope on it. Let's see what we got here. See, the cylinder walls don't look bad at all, huh? A little pitting, but I don't see any reason why it would be locked up. And they pretty much all look that way. Maybe if we take all the tissues out, I'm sure that'll fix our problem. Tissue removal fixes it every time. Looks like uh, they decided to paint the whole engine. You know, why Why leave? And it just, people might, you know, want to see your orange rockers and studs and springs and stuff. I mean, why? Look look at the paint in here. Why is that the case? I mean, did, did, did we paint the, the lifters and the rod bearings and everything? Look at the paint down in here. All right, my camera cut off on me, but I got the valve covers and the intake off because I'm not going to use that intake anyway. We want to do like a... That has the EGR on it it's for TBI, whatever. And we're going to do like a four barrel carburetor setup. Now I'm just lubing down the valve train here. See what that gets us. I can just barely <clears throat> move it back and forth here. Which is better than what we had before, I guess. Let's see if there's any oil in it. Let's see what this tells us. It was awful loose. Nothing but water. A whole lot of water. And of course, you know, paint. That's fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that right there is the good stuff. That's what you want to see coming out of your engine. I don't even know. Like, what is this? Best I can figure, that's paint. Well, I'm saying the best thing we can do now is turn this over and open her up. I mean, I, what? Ugh. That's why you, I love Marketplace. Okay, here we go. Just everything is orange. 
everything. If you like orange, you're in good shape here. If you're a big, big fan of orange, you are a winner. And this is loose too. Hmm. Not even putting up a fight of any kind. Look at that. I wish you would look at this. I don't believe I've ever seen anything like this. Ugh. And if that didn't tickle your neck hairs, this sure should. That's rust. This engine ain't no good. Ain't been good for a long time. Look at this crank. Look how it's all scaled and rusted. Look, look down in there. That's our cylinder wall on the underside of the piston. That's the worst one right there. The front actually doesn't look horrible, but this thing's been sitting without oil for so long. Terrible. Well, it would appear as though somebody got took. And by somebody, of course, you know, I mean me. I want to soak this down. I'm going to use the WD this time because I just want to see if it'll break free. I know it's, you know, shot. But sometimes they'll come back around. Soak the ever-loving snot out of it. If we were getting no movement out of this at all, I wouldn't even waste my time. But since I am getting a little bit, I just want to see if by chance it'll move past that. I'm getting a little more each time. I'm throwing everything I got at this. I even found this old can of uh, Nut Buster. And I'm just, you know, we're just going to soak this thing down really, really good and let it sit and eat all that up. I'm gonna go get some ATF and uh, let it soak in that too for a while. And we'll just keep working it. Just keep working it, baby. I pulled that gasket off of it, sprayed it down again. Oh, oh, it broke. Oh, look at there. Uh oh. Hello. Uh, uh, almost a full turn. Let's soak it some more. Mm -hmm. A little more ATF into this one here. All right, back at it. Can't quite get all the way around. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Boy, it ain't, it ain't the easiest thing in the world, but it is turning now. Keep putting this ATF down in here. Come on, baby. There we go. Oh yeah. Full turns. Let's go this way now. Whew. All right. So this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking since I'm not really hearing anything crazy, we put a new oil pump on it, get the parts that we need, throw it together, see if it'll run and how it runs. Okay, good. 
thought I broke that for a minute there. Glad I didn't. Either way, we gotta have one of these jokers because this one is never gonna work. We'll get one of these and uh, we'll throw it back together. I gotta order some parts, so we'll get some stuff coming. Uh, we'll throw it together and maybe we can just run it here on the stand and see how that goes. And uh, I'll come back to you when we have some stuff. Ah, disgusting. I went out to the O'Reilly's right quick and got me some stuff. And what we're going to do is go ahead and put a new oil pump on this. I would need that anyway, right? And fill it with oil. And, you know... Get it primed good, run that through the system. And then I'm going to get some parts coming from Summit. And we're going to see if this jerker will run just the way it is. And if it will, then we're good. And if we're not, well, we haven't lost anything because either way, the parts that I'm going to get, I would still have to get. We'll just have to tear it back down and you know, rebuild it or whatever. It's a small block Chevy, so it should run. As long as it don't have a bad rod bearings or something crazy, should be good to go. We'll see. Is this crazy? I don't know. It's probably crazy. Let's see. I need some brake clean. We'll just clean this up. We'll get a new oil pan gasket on here. And hopefully, it won't leak. It don't help matters if you shoot the brake clean over there. The engine's over here, dummy. Mostly what I'm getting is orange paint. Go figure. Now I'm going to have to turn this over and drain everything. So, we'll throw some rags down in here. Try to keep the splatter down, I guess. Plus, oil-soaked rags are great for your bonfire. All right. There we go. I need to lube this dang thing up. What in the devil? Yeah. What on earth? Come on, you monkey. Come on. Roll over for daddy. There we go. Woo. I got me a little more ATF, so I'm going to drizzle some of that in here. It'll smoke like a fiend that fires up, but this will just help lube everything a little. Can't hurt. Oil pressure. Doohickey. We'll worry about this later. Well, I guess we'll go ahead and get it before we uh, put fresh oil and stuff in it, huh? I mean, it has plenty of paint. It certainly doesn't need all this other stuff. I haven't seen this much silicone since Stretch Armstrong. It's just so ridiculous. The water jackets look good. They're orange, but aside from that, must have been a fire sale on blue silicone. We're going to definitely have to get after this with like a wire wheel or something. I got to try to pick the silicone out of the bolt holes. Got it. All right, I think that's the bulk of it. We'll worry about cleaning it up really good when we put new intake on it. We want to talk about jamming up a new oil pump. Silicone will do it. It sure will. Silicone and orange paint. Well, what we got to do now is 
clean this joker out. I wish you would look at that. Look at it. Just look at it. What an ordeal. Let me see if I can loosen up the gunk here. Now, get her wiped out. Well, there went a whole can of brake clean, but very, very necessary. This is why I pick this stuff up every time I go to the auto parts store. Missed a spot. Just rinsing out the last of the paint chips. Mm. Sure. This is going to be a lot easier if I don't have to deal with the dipstick. And even that is full of gunk and silicone and paint. Let's flip it over and start putting something together here. Ugh, I don't know who did this, but whoever it was could stand a little schooling, I think. I mean, I ain't no ace mechanic by any means, but I like to think that even I know better than this. A freaking orange paint. I've never seen so much orange paint. Now this could be, you know, a complete waste of time, but it might not. Not costing me anything, but a little elbow grease. Well, and some oil, I guess. Let's see about getting our oil pump on. Here's our old oil pump. This is the one I just picked up from the O'Reilly's. And apparently, it has to have this shaft, which is fine. Looks like this would go on here and a little set screw or pin. Is that a pin? It's a pin. So is there a place for a pin? No. So how's that supposed to work? Is that just set on there? Was this one just set on there? Oh, it sure was. Sort of. It had a clip holding it in place. I mean, that'd just fall right out. Well, that's the one the book says it should have. I guess it just sets on there. Now we need to get our pickup screen. And this thing is not working out either. I don't know what the story is. So this whole deal just isn't making sense to me. This thing, you know, just sets there. Like, it just falls right off. And this, that's, I mean, what is that? When I look at this one, it still has that rib on the outside of it. It's hard to tell. But it's not like that rib is pounding into the side of the oil pump. So I don't really want to tap that in. And it'd be wrong. I need to. I got to do a little research here. I'll let you know what I find out. All right, people. I got this figured out called Melling. Apparently, the folks at O'Reilly's gave me the wrong pump. There's an M55HV, which is what came out of the truck, and an M155HV. Same, same pump, but the, out, uh, the inlet size or whatever is different. I don't know. Probably half my fault too. I should pay better attention. But anyway, the rest of this is right, so we can put this together now and get it on the end zone. I'm just going to set this the same way that it was set on the old pump. Normally, I think you would measure your pan distance and all that stuff, but we're just going to set it the same and i don't have one of those fancy you know doohickeys where you tap these in so we're gonna have to 
just try to play this by ear here. Let's see if I could just get it started. Now I'll take my pliers here with the round part on that rib and see if we could tap her in. Well, that's not working. Maybe if we just put a little, you know, we'll inject some lubrication into this ordeal here. If I can get any out of the can. Come on, peanut butter. Oh, crap. Well, this isn't working worth a hoot. Uh, that's up too high. As soon as I twist this, it's going to want to come off. Well, for what I have here, this really is the best option. So we'll just, you know, stick with it here. Hopefully everything comes out all right. Let me set it in the floor and do it. Almost. Near about. This is a hell of a way to... Don't do what I do, people. Okay? You, I'm sure there's a better way to do this. Almost got it. Yeah. There we go. Well, it's scarred up a little bit, but... It's in there. I guess if this becomes a problem... That'll be, you know, all my fault, which is fine. It just goes to, here's what you guys can do, okay? You show this video to your wives next time you want to buy some tools, and your wife is like, what do you need that for? And you can say, this is why. If I don't have the correct tool, I end up doing like this knucklehead and uh, mangling stuff all up. Okay, this goes to 45 foot pounds. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie, this goes on here. But we are going to put a little RTV in the corners. Man, these dang things of RTV when you store them always gum up. Always. I've tried every freaking trick in the book I can think of to keep it where you can use it a second time. And none of it works. If y'all happen to know a trick or something, put that in the comments or send me an email or, I don't know, carrier pigeon, anything. Because this is full Because it's like a full tube. Like all of this is full and I can feel it. It's squishy. Anyway, we want to put this down in these corners here. There's a little... uh you know, mating area here. And that's what we're after to seal up. Now we can set our gasket down on here. And our nice clean oil pan that is way unlevel. Maybe I better run some RTV across it too, just to make sure. Overkill and probably not correct. But this pan has been tightened and just warped and painted and I don't know. So we're just going to add a little sealant to the sides to see if that will help us cover any gaps. Pretty. It's like finger painting in kindergarten. Who knew that would come in handy, huh? I need to get the uh, little support strip thingies. That's this one. Goes here. We're doing the hardware dance. Wrist tight. That's all we want here. Something terribly wrong here. Well, there's really no reason it shouldn't work. I don't see where it's all jacked up. Maybe it was just gunked up. Let me put it on the wire wheel. Now, see if our nut 
will run all the way down. Okay, it will. So, we'll try it again here, see if it'll tighten the pan up. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Could be that it's the wrong stud. Because it's not allowing the nut to go down and seat the pan the whole way. Of course, if you remember, when we took this off, nothing was seated or sealed. It was on here just loosey-goosey. Let me see what I got in the bolt stash. See if this will work. Ha <laughs> ha! Bolt stash to the rescue. It still didn't look exactly right to me, so I just squeezed a little RTV in the end of this. and It'll probably still leak. But, should be good enough to try what we want to try here. Let's get this puppy on here. All righty, flip her over. Now, here we go again. I need to work out more. Now, we'll have to clean all this up real good before we go to put an intake on it, which I have an intake coming from Summit Racing. Now, I'm hoping it'll just run right it'll just run and then what we'll do is we'll run it through some heat cycles let this oil go through get all the paint and crud out and then we may even run like a quart of atf in the oil or something and then we can drain the oil and uh you know we'll go from there i don't know how many of you caught my mistake there but uh I completely forgot to put my oil pump shaft in and you can only get to it from this side. So I'm mad at myself and I'm mad at this, uh, well, I'm just mad. So I thought I would brush my uh, balancer here. So I got to take all this back off and uh, put my shaft in and uh, I'm not going to make you all suffer through that. It's bad enough that I have to suffer through that. But this is real life, people. This is real life right here, okay? You don't get this on any other YouTube channel. They just show you how everything in the world is perfect. But it's not. Sometimes you screw stuff up. Oh, happy days. Let's try this again, shall we? Well, if this didn't leak before, it's certainly going to now. There. I certainly hope you all have enjoyed this week's episode of Hammer's How to Be a Knucklehead Show. Complete with orange glitter. Okay, where were we? We were flipping this puppy over. <clears throat> <clears throat> talking about how we were going to fill it with oil any who and how and by the way that down in there is the shaft that i forgot you can only get it in from the underside it's trapped between the pump and the block and so now what i need to do is take this flat tip screwdriver and just make sure that it's seated and turning the pump. And the way we'll double check that here in a minute is by priming it once we fill it full of oil. I got this. This is the cheapest filter I could find. MicroGuard from the O'Reilly's. If I can get the protective plug. I mean, it's not food. What is with the... Oh, for the love of Pete. No, there we go. I'm just going to dump some in here. And I'm just putting any oil I can find in it. Because if it runs, we're just going to run it through and flush it and then change the oil again. 
If it does not run, then I have used the cheapest oil possible. Run a little bit around our seal there. Sure. Uh-oh. There's no doohickey. Oh, for Pete's sake. I just realized the oil pump, the oil filter adapter thingy is missing. See, once again, people, you are witnessing my unbelievable attention to detail. Right in here, where your oil filter would mount, there's supposed to be a filter adapter thingy mounted in here. It's been robbed, and so have I. Well, a quick run to the O, 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 O'Reilly's, and I think we have what we need from Mr. Gasket here, your hot rod helper. We just got to clean this up in here first. There's a bunch of, I guess it's old gasket material and paint, of course, lots of paint. I don't know. Can you tell I'm a little bitter about all the paint? Maybe bitter is not the right word. A little annoyed. Let's clean this up, make sure we get a... You know, a good, clean surface for our new doohickey here. A little brake clean and a scouring pad. A do wonders and a gasket scraper. I suppose we should do the same thing around here where the oil seal hits. This is a good way to get lots of grease and dirt in your fingernails, too. I suppose I could be wearing gloves, but then I wouldn't look like a true grease monkey. And the ladies love it. And make sure we have our gasket in place here. Big old scissors for the, you know, theft fruit packaging. Now, as I understand it, this, this thing goes closest to the engine. I don't know why. It's just what I've always heard or been told. I don't know what the torque spec is. So it's going to get the good old-fashioned... German version, good and tight. We'll just go back and forth so we don't put too much pressure on one side or the other. Wrist tight is all I'm giving it. That should be fine. Okay, now we can go back to where we were two or three times ago and flubber over again. Yeah. <sighs> It gets easier every time. That's a lie. I just lied to y'all. Don't, you know, hold it against me. Now we can put our micro guard on. Hand tight. I'm just checking the block over and everything because it was missing so many things. And I want to make sure we don't have any open holes before I go dumping oil in here. I think all I see is the dipstick. And then there's this one hole here in the head. What we'll do is plug it up for now just in case. I think I've got some plugs over there. Took some doing, but I found my little bag of plugs. That's all they are is these little, you know, well, they're plugs. That's what I'm saying. Clean that out. See if we can find one that fits. I'm pretty sure that's it. I'm going to go get a tool. That'll be fine for now. It's temporary. I think now we can dump oil down in it. Good to the last drop. O'Reilly's finest 10W30. I don't see it leaking anywhere yet, so. You know, there's that. Not sure this is necessary, but we're going to go ahead and put this dipstick back in to we'll just let it sit like that. That way, if it shoots oil out, it'll be way over there. Sometime back, I got this uh, oil priming tool. Put this joker on a drill. All I want to know here is if... See, it fits down in there. This will prime the oil pump. It'll also tell me, you know, what kind of shape my oil passages are in. Hello. We got good oil pressure. 
Go back in there. Go back in. Well, the oil pump's good. Primed, and I did see some oil spurting out of the uh, push rods. That's a good start. And we get an intake on it and uh, an oil pressure thingy. And we'll go from there. Cool little tool there. Yeah, I clean up my mess and wait for some parts. Well, this thing's swinging all around. It's great my nerves already. So we're just going to kind of stick it up here temporarily. That should be fine. Now we're going to clean up the heads while we wait for our intake to show up. So it'll be ready to go. Look, that looks like, like somebody's pants. I'm going to try to catch as much of this crap as we possibly can. Not that it's not, you know, full of crap and paint and whatever else already. Oh, for Pete's sake. We're going to get the roll lock after it. As long as you use one of these soft ones, should be fine. Dang it. See there? Nice and clean. Again, as long as you use one of those soft roll locks, you should be fine. You don't want to take any metal off. You just want to scrub off, off of, you know, all the crap. Of course, I can't do much about all the paint and everything down in there. While I'm waiting for parts, I'm just going to clean up this old gasket material off this is these exhaust ports here. I think my parts are coming UPS. Oops. Stands for oops. I forgot your package. Get the roll lock after these too. <laughs> You know, while I am waiting for parts, it seems like a good time to talk about the fact that I upset, apparently, a group of people who were uh, thinking I was going to do, like, I don't know, some sort of high-dollar long-term restoration on this Camaro. And, you know, they're, well, uh, let's just say that they're bent out of shape. I guess the first thing I would say about that is I don't have a damn to give. And I check. Uh, let's see here. Well, fresh out. This car is, needs so much work that it would take a year and a bunch of money. And I just, you know, I, I like it the way it is. We're going budget on this as, as best as we can. I got 450 bucks into this. Then I had to buy the um, pump and some oil and a couple other things to get to this point from O'Reilly's, which, you know, that was the bit, the total bill was like 250 bucks. Of course, some of that was shop supplies. So we'll call it 200. So that's 650. And then I ordered a, I got a parts order in at Summit and it's stuff that we need, whether the engine runs or not, right? Because we're not going to just trash it. <clears throat> If it's got a rod knock or whatever, then we'll take it apart and, you know, do it the right way and rebuild it. But maybe it runs the way it does. Either way, I need those parts, you know, intake, water pump, flex plate, all this kind of stuff, set of headers for the car. So I ordered all that so we could run it on the stand, distributor and that kind of stuff. And that was like 900 bucks. So 450, call it 650, I got 1500 bucks into this so far and you know you'll pay that much nowadays for a good junkyard ls and crate motors don't even get me talking about crate motors because you can get a long block a long block they start at four grand okay four grand and you still need all the bolt-on stuff i got a good feeling about this i think old orange here is gonna work out for us we'll see let me get the exhaust on the other side and if it doesn't work out, well, we still had fun, right? This is fun. The dipstick that I put out of my way is now in my way. Roll lock. <laughs> Reminds me of that movie, The Green Mile. Roll on tune. What do you mean you stepped on Mr. Jangles? I was checking to see if that hole went all the way through. It does not. And if, I don't know much about this generation of 350s. I don't know much about anything, really. Listen, I am no Lucky Costa, okay? I'll take this, I've got some kind of bracket for something. Pretty sure we don't need it. 
What I do need is some dang parts. Come on, UPS man. We got to put a flex plate on this puppy too. And I want to run it on the stand. It looks like I'm going to need to get some clearance. Clearance. I guess some spacers or washers or something. Just enough where that flex plate can spin unimpeded. But I am excited to see if this thing runs good though. Pretty stoked about that. Can't wait for my neighbors to hear it either. Now the UPS man just dropped off some more goodies. Let's see what we got in this box. Yeah, there's our starter and flex plate. Uh, oh, this is a pulley kit that I had to get uh, to go to V-Groove. There's our distributor. This must be the intake. Let's find out. Yeah, here's our intake from Pro Products. Never heard of them, but I wanted cheap, and I guess that's what I got. This thing is steady, dripping oil, uh, and it's coming from this the pan seal. It's not the you know the main seal. It's this where this you know we I don't know if you recall, but I had trouble with the rear of this pan. It's mangled up and it wouldn't sit tight. So if this engine is good, we uh, we're gonna have to fix that or get a new pan. I guess test fit our. Uh... Pro products intake here. Just make sure it's actually good. Okay. Well, we'll get it on here then. I got the black RTV. Okay. We're going to hit these corners and around the water jacket. And then, of course, our Great Wall of China. Great China wall. Let that set up a little bit. Setting my gasket down in place here on each side. They're a little deformed and they got these block off plates, or I guess maybe they're restrictor plates, or I don't know, something for the rear water jackets. I guess if it becomes a problem, you know, we'll deal with it well we set this down on here now get a bolt started mm -hmm. you have to use these bushings for the two center bolts on each side and you know the the bolts that i ordered i don't i don't feel like i'm getting a lot of bite and then there's one over here you can't get a socket on so you have to turn it with a wrench because it's so close to this casting so so much for you know, being able to get a proper torque. Torquing is overrated. Anyway. No, that's not right. Something not right with that one. What do we got going on down here? Bunch of muck in the threads, I guess. I should have cleaned them out better. Or, you know, at all, really. Brilliant. I don't know why I didn't expect that. Let's hit it again and maybe cover ourselves up. If you're wondering why I don't just chase these threads, it's because I don't have a thread chaser thingy. I've got these uh, carburetor studs, this package, uh, it's just been in my box of hot rod stuff forever. So I don't have to buy any of these, thank goodness. And we can just run these down in here. We can just snug them up. You want to be careful. This is just aluminum. Just finger tight is all I'm doing here. Well, just to be able to get it to fire up, I think uh, all we need is the flex plate because it's externally balanced. So we need to get that on, get a distributor in, and throw a carburetor and some valve covers on it. And we could fire this thing up on the stand and see what we got. Good morning. Glad to see you finally got out of bed. I'm just taping up this intake here so we can get our lift plate on because we need to see about getting a flex plate on here. We've got to wrestle the hoist out.
I'm just going to bring her all the way out. Stretched this puppy out this morning. Let's check our flex plate here. Made in Mexico. Hecho in Mexico. Underlay. How does this go on again? The pad's out. It only goes on one way as I understand it. Well, that must be it right there. Well, ain't that a hoot. Let me get my dead blow. That's really mucking me up. Of course, it could be all the paint. Who's to say? Are you really supposed to beat these things on? I don't think so. Let me get my bolts. See if it'll cinch on. Yeah, I had to get new hardware too because, you know, didn't come with it. I just want to see if I can actually get it to seat. Fries are done. It's like the flex plate itself is just a tick at a round right there where that guide pin is. Do I dare try to clearance that a little more? Maybe we just take the Dremel and sand it down a little. The joys of aftermarket parts. That seemed to help some. Yeah, you could see where the machining was not quite perfect. There we go. I think that'll... Yep, there it goes. Perfect. Well, now that we're straight with that, we can run these in permanently for permanenti for, you know what I'm saying, forever. I didn't need this. I mean, I need it. I didn't need it. You know, like, need the package to mix the material all up is what I'm saying. Now we'll figure out what the torque spec is and torque them down. 60, but we'll start with 45 because it's already on the gun. This ought to be a hoot given it's swinging from the hoist. Ooh, we're going to have to set this puppy down. Almost screwed up there. I adjusted the torque on this. Holy sh Oh, inch pounds. How the hell do that? 60 foot pounds. Jeez Louise. Got to get it back on the stand. Next thing we need to do is set our distributor. And the way I'm going to go about doing that is I got a pick. I can feel the top of the piston right here. So I know it's up. And I want to make sure it's up with both of these valves closed. So these valves, th these parts of the rocker will be up on both of these. And that'll tell me that it's up on the compression stroke. And then we'll see where our balancer lines up here. Okay, it's coming up, and both of these are closed, and I see my mark here. We'll set the mark on zero. We'll grab that distributor here in just a second and get it set in place. I'm going to go ahead and get this lift plate back off, because we're going to need a carbon beretta. Got this Summit Racing Brand distributor. Oh, good. It's packed with styrofoam. Get out of there. Look at that. Fancy. The cheapest one they had. Go ahead and pop the cap. I suppose I should have unplugged it first. I'm going to lube this ooh, gear up just a little first. Let's see, where do we want to set the vacuum thingy? Do I have to move my oil pump thingy? Almost. Fiddly. Fiddly, fiddly. Oh, there it goes. Okay, and we're pointed at number one. Should be good right there. I got this grappy little tie down here. To the bolt stash. There we go. Now we can put our cap on. There we go. Here's our starter. The Power Master Performance. I wanted this compact high torque unit. You know, when you got headers, you need to think about such things. Whoopsie. Hokey dokey. Looks like we just hook up a cable there and a start wire there. 
we're gonna need a carburetor and I believe I have some in this box well I got this one in a UPS bag looks like an Edelbrock and then I've got this one oh also an Edelbrock looks like we're going Edelbrock I can't find a gasket so I guess we'll have to run out and get one at some point but that will be our fuel machine let's see plug wires plugs and a battery and some cables and stuff let me round everything up and i'll be back rigged up some electrical power from some cable i had laying around i just ran the ground to the block and hooked it up to this battery in then on the starter same thing just you know ran this i don't know if it's the right gauge or not but for testing purposes it should be fine i don't know how much charge is this has but hopefully enough to do this i guess got my starter trigger thingy here last time i used this it was sticking a little i think what we're going to do is hook it up to the starter first then we can touch it here and see what happens <laughs> it did scare me a little i don't know why this thing is sticking all right well it's got oil on it let's see how it cranks over You hear that knocking? I think that's a flex plate back there. Oh, the starter is not disengaging. Might need a shim. Maybe we ought to shim it. Sometimes you just need a shim. Dang it. Give me a shim, Jim. Snap it to a shim, Jim. What if we lube it up a little? That's going to sling it everywhere. <laughs> Okay, good news. I didn't hear anything crazy. And we have oil pressure. Well, that starter's still not disengaging the way it should, but we'll worry with that later. I got these, I had these uh, R45TS spark plugs. Are they the right ones? No idea. Will they work for this? Yes, they will. Well, I got these plug wires that were up on the shelf. They're, uh, I think they're from an old Mustang project that I did, but for what we're doing, it ought to be fine. Hey, as long as it fires up. Which one was number one? I forgot. It should be number one on that cap. I didn't mark it. Well, no, it should already be marked on the cap. Huh? No, why would... Yeah, I think Chevy marks them. Well, this one ain't. This is a Summit brand. Oh. I've done spun this motor over I don't know how many times. Yep. Now I'm gonna have to reason. I'm gonna have to set it again. That's our zero mark right there. Looks like I had this 180 out this morning. Glad we redid that. One eight four three six five seven two. Sound right to you? Right. None of these plug wires matches. <laughs> well, like you said. For a test, it'll be fine. Yep. Got one of these old cheapo gauge sets. This is just so I can get my uh, get an oil pressure. Yeah. yeah, you do need that. And keep it from shooting out of the back of the motor. Let's see what we get. Hell, if I get 10 or 20 pounds out of it just cranking, it'll be all right. 25, that's about 30. You can get away with seven. All we got to do now is uh, throw the headers on it, get a carburetor gasket. Yeah, let me run up and I'll check on that. And then uh, we'll try firing it off, see if it barks off. That's my neighbor, Ernie. He likes to come over and get involved sometimes. Good guy. I got the cheapest steel headers from Summit you could get. All right, we'll hook up our battery. And I got the distributor on a hot wire. If something goes haywire, Ernie, we just pull this red cable off. Yep. And we'll be... Good to go, I think. We're going to pour a little fuel down in the vent here. We ready? Kind of scared. <laughs> kind of nervous. Let's see what happens. A little more fuel. Let's dump a little down the primary.
Whoa. Fire and roll. Yeah. I think our timing's out. Well, she didn't back. Well, she did backfire one time. Yeah, see, we were 188. She's gonna fire now. Let me get this flipped over. I was right the first time, Ernie. Well, that's always better. I like when you're right the first time. Here we go. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, that's the flex plate uh, is warped. It sure is. Yeah. That shouldn't keep it from running for a few seconds. Well, no, it's it should run, but I mean it's warped. I wouldn't be leaving that one. You say that's a new one? Yeah. One more time. But she runs. We've heard it bark off. Yeah, that flex plate and starter combination is not happy. Mm -hmm. Small block Chevy. You get oil pressure and compression. Yep. That's all you need. That's it. It was a lot of work to get here with our four hundred fifty dollar marketplace bench. See you later, Ernie. Well, folks, I think that's going to wrap up this video. We have a power plant for the Rat Marrow, and we got a transmission down there that came out of Winston, so eventually we'll make this stuff up and put it in there. But I think we've got some floor work, some other things to do, you know, brakes, suspension, steering, that kind of stuff. The important stuff, I guess. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you got something out of it. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Hope you guys had a fantastic uh, holiday. Christmas and New Year's. We look forward to 2024. We'll see you real soon. I got to get cleaned up out here.